You've walked these trails before, overlooked the cracks, passed the stones without a second glance. But what if the patterns you dismissed were trying to tell you something? A secret whispered in stone, a message left by time itself. Because gold doesn't shout, it hides. And when it hides, it chooses rock. In the wilderness, gold doesn't come with a signpost, no neon light, no glittering hint. But the earth keeps a record, etched in folds, fractures, and formations. Today, we decode that record. Because gold is often found near these rock patterns. Let's begin with veins. Those bold, branching intrusions slicing through solid rock. Veins are like nature's highways for minerals. And when hot fluids once surged through these cracks, they didn't just pass through. They left behind treasures. Quartz iron oxides, and in the lucky few, gold. Imagine boiling water beneath the earth, pressurized, heavy with metal particles. It forces itself into fractures, cools, crystallizes. That white quartz you see on a hike? It's not just rock, it's a clue, a trail marker. Because quartz is gold's oldest companion. Where you find one, the other is often nearby. But it's not just the quartz itself. It's the pattern it forms. Is it jagged, cross-cutting the grain? Does it intersect with iron-stained stone? Those intersections, called contact zones, are where alchemy once happened deep underground. And today, that alchemy could be your fortune. Next, the folds. Layers twisted like taffy, schist, gneiss, slate. These are the pages of Earth's history books, bent, compressed, sometimes shattered. And where rock folds, gold has room to hide. You see, folding doesn't just shape the landscape. It creates pressure traps, voids, pockets, little natural vaults where gold gets locked in, especially near the hinge zones, the tightest curve of the fold. You wouldn't notice it unless you were trained to look. But those folded layers, they could be cradling a jackpot. Another pattern you must never ignore, oxidized zones. Rock turned red, orange, even yellow the colors of decay. And yet decay leads to discovery. Because where iron oxidizes, it leaves behind the rusty fingerprint of mineral-rich fluids. In mining, these are called gossens, iron caps that form above hidden veins. If you find rock that looks burned or rusted by time, you may be standing right above buried treasure. Let's descend deeper into fault lines. Not just earthquake scars, but gold's favorite pathways. Faults are the arteries of mineral movement. When rock shears and slips, it opens doors for superheated fluids to enter. The result? A mineralized fault zone, laced with quartz, pyrite, and sometimes gold itself. And it's not just the faults, it's what forms alongside them. Shear zones, where rock is pulverized, reheated, and remade. Gold doesn't just appear, it rides chaos. And chaos leaves patterns behind. Some of the world's richest gold mines sit right on these fracture networks. But from above, they look like nothing, until you learn to read the stone. Now let's move to a softer clue. Sedimentary layering. In riverbeds, deltas, and floodplains, gold often gets trapped in ancient gravels. But again, it's not the presence alone. It's the pattern. Horizontal bands of gravel. Fine layers of black sand. Sudden changes in soil color. Each one can indicate a placer deposit. That's right, loose gold freed from its rock, and waiting to be scooped. If you spot tightly packed gravels over clay layers with sudden dips and curves, you're likely walking over an ancient gold trap. And sometimes you can even find false bedrock, a hard layer like compacted clay or shale that mimics the real thing. Gold can rest right above it, because in the game of gravity and erosion, gold always sinks. Don't forget the pegmatites. These coarse-grained veins filled with large crystals and exotic minerals may appear out of place, but they often connect to larger intrusions, and with them can come tiny flecks of gold. Their presence in certain terrains tells a larger story. That heat once surged here, and minerals came with it. It's a silent language, written in fracture, fold, rust, and quartz. A language of patterns, forged in fire and pressure, waiting for someone to listen. You don't need machines, you don't need luck, you need vision. To see the landscape not as a path, but as a puzzle. 
and gold is always hiding in the seams. And as we journey deeper into the world of geological riddles and silent patterns that whisper the presence of gold, the second half of this exploration unveils the final signs, terrains, and strategies seasoned prospectors never ignore. Now consider iron-stained quartz veins. Quartz on its own is a common sight, but when iron oxidation leaves red, orange, or yellow streaks within or around the vein, your senses should perk up. These stains mean water once moved through these veins carrying iron, and where iron flows, gold often follows. Iron-stained quartz veins in fractured, decomposed granite or schist have yielded countless ounces for those who understood this clue. Take note, the more oxidized the surroundings, the higher the chance you're close to a weathered, near-surface gold deposit. Next, focus your eyes on fracture-controlled patterns. Look for sheeted vein systems, multiple closely spaced quartz veins running parallel, like a book of geological pages. These form when intense pressure forces mineral-rich fluids to exploit every possible fracture. In regions like Nevada and Western Australia, these sheeted veins have produced entire mountain loads of gold. If you're tracing a hill and find tightly packed white lines crisscrossing the slope, stop and study. You might be reading the diary of a gold-bearing fault. But gold doesn't only favor obvious fractures. It often resides in folded rocks, especially where the layers bend into anticlines or synclines. These folds create pressure shadows and dilation zones, perfect places for mineral-rich fluids to pool. In Canada's Abitibi Greenstone Belt and parts of Ethiopia's Tulukapi region, major deposits align with these folded structures. If you're hiking and notice layers of sedimentary rock forming waves like ripples in stone, that's no coincidence. You're standing in a structure nature designed to catch gold. Another advanced clue is alteration halos. These are zones where surrounding rock changes color and texture due to chemical reactions from hydrothermal fluids. Look for argillic alteration, where feldspar-rich rocks turn soft and clay-like, or silicification, where rocks turn glassy and hard due to quartz saturation. These halos often appear dull gray, bleached, or with a chalky surface. They're not beautiful, but they're golden, figuratively and sometimes literally. These zones don't shout gold. They whisper it. In volcanic areas, especially around calderas and ancient hot springs, gold forms in epithermal systems, shallow near-surface zones where hot water once circulated aggressively. Here, look for center terraces, banded quartz veins, and cavities known as vugs. These textures form when hot water boiled near the surface and left behind silica and metals. Gold in these systems often comes with silver and forms in delicate, crystalline shapes. Don't just pan the streams, study the banding in the rocks. Also, don't overlook color anomalies in satellite or drone imagery. Many major discoveries began with discolorations on a hillside, light patches, bleached zones, or reddish scars where vegetation refuses to grow. These seemingly dead spots are zones where mineralization cooked the surface soil. What seems lifeless could be the hottest trail. And then there's the ultimate pattern, the human pattern. Follow the old miners. Look for rusted tools, collapsed shafts, broken quartz, or tailings piles. In many regions, especially in Africa, South America, and even parts of the US, historic gold districts were abandoned too soon due to lack of technology or shallow mining. The patterns are still there, etched into the hillsides and creek beds. They lead to places still rich with promise. Finally, remember this. No single pattern guarantees gold. But when multiple indicators converge, iron-stained quartz, fold structures, alteration halos, and favorable rock types, you're no longer guessing. You're reading the Earth's blueprint. And that brings us to the close of this incredible expedition. If this video opened your eyes to patterns you've overlooked for years, then it's time to look again with intention, with knowledge, and with the quiet thrill of the possible gold beneath your very feet. At EGS Pro, we're not just chasing rocks, we're uncovering the hidden language of the earth. One pattern, one mystery, one golden discovery at a time. Don't forget to subscribe for more real gold stories, field-tested techniques, and insider geology from the front lines of nature's treasure map. Until next time, keep your eyes sharp, your pans ready and your belief unshaken, because the land never lies, it only waits. This is EGS Pro, where the earth speaks and you learn to listen.